computer. Recording start. All right, so a pleasant good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the lab portion of your SNF1 course. I'm delighted to be your lecturer for the lab. My name is Dr. Patrick Campbell, and in terms of by means of introduction, um, let me see, I, I'm originally from the South. I live in St. Augustine, and um, I did my bachelor's degree at Morehouse College in Atlanta, and then I went on to do a PhD in the biomedical sciences at Morehouse School of Medicine, and then Costat called me, and I was glad to come out of the school and come back home, and um, I've been teaching this course for like the last 10 years, and I enjoy it tremendously. What do I like to do? I like to listen to West Indies cricket as an next talk all in itself. At Maya, how you do we, boy? That's another story all in itself. But I like West Indies cricket, and um, yeah, I, I like to, to watch any sport. I played both cricket and football when I was in secondary school. I also played pan. So I appreciate sports in general, and I like pan as well. All right, so that's enough about me. So before we go forward, if you would, let's just do a little introduction, go around the table. So I'll call you by name if you happen to be here. If you would, just say a name. Where you're from, you know, I get specific. You could say just give North, South, East, or West, and something you like to do that is not illegal, immoral, or fattening. All right, so your name, where you're from, something you like to do. So let's start. Artie here. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Artie Bahadur. I'm from Rio Claro, and I love to cook. What you're saying, I always remember. Rio Claro fondly. When I was playing under 14 cricket, we went up there. Well, at the time it was Rio Claro Junior Sec. And I, was, I came in at number six. I was a wicket keeper then. And I hit the ball up in the air, a little spinner ball to me. And hit the ball up in the air. And I was like, oh, Lord. And he walked the bowler, he walked under it, walked under it, and he dropped me. He dropped the ball. <laughs> and after he dropped me, I went on to make like to the two runs. And after that game, my coach asked me to open because I was hitting the ball well. <laughs> so all that being said, I always remember Rio Clara and that guy. If he didn't drop the ball, I wouldn't make the runs, impress the coach, <laughs> and he would not permit to open. And after that, I just opened, you know, for <laughs> both on the 16 and senior level. I became an opener after that. So every time I, I watch you guys, I always remember that, you know. What would have happened if he'd have caught me? Hmm. Things would have been totally different. But one thing I also remember is when, when we were up there, um, let me see, coach went out, we get one set of fruit. It was, it, it's a lot of gala and thing, orange. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She went out, get one set of gala and orange and thing. Yeah, I, I always have fun memories of Rio Claro. Yeah. <laughs> All right, good, good. Nice, nice to meet you, Artie. <laughs> okay, here. Elizabeth, no problem. Elizabeth? Elizabeth might have stepped out for tea and Hi. don't feel pressured. Hi, I am here. So, so don't feel Good pressured. Afternoon. Sure. Don't feel pressured <laughs> to say anything. If you're if you're you know feeling tingling ling under the weather, you can just type something in the chat. I am mad at you. Go ahead, Elizabeth. <laughs> Hi, so good afternoon, Elizabeth Blackett. I'm from Port of Spain. So I enjoy basically anything that's positive and getting more knowledge and to learn other people and i enjoy doing anything like that what you i don't saying? have anything and i don't have anything in particular like a favorite that i like doing something no it's not like general it's just like all wrong mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah so i enjoy a lot of things you could sing if i could sing so yeah bathroom you know bathroom voice yeah yeah me and mad at you because as, I, I see it breaks in, yeah, breaks in there like a karate kick like you thought i was gonna ask you to sing but no 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 i just i am mad, mad at you mad at you thanks elizabeth okay alan no problem, mm -hmm. alan if you would good day everybody my name is alan deodorine um i am an up upcoming chutney suka artist what are you saying and uh, that's it for now. Thank you. <laughs> that is great, man. What, what? We had to watch out for you, man. I mean, the season coming up now. This is the first time we have an open season in terms of people really mixing and so on for quite a while. I will look out for you, man. You're making jokes. Uh, to be honest with you, my dream is to enter the Calypso Monarch. Mm -hmm. And win. Yeah. Well, not really. Just enter the Monarch. If I win, mm -hmm. I will mm -hmm. enter the stage because I think is that I think that the rich on this stage that uh, you yeah, know, no. I hear you. That, in it, that is an achievement in itself, boy. Yeah, I think that is, a, that is a minute I always admire. Thanks a lot, Alan. All right, Natalie. 
right? Natalie might be here to hit, to hit. And if I happen to mispronounce your name, please blame it on my head and not my heart. Tehila? Yes, sir, Tehila. Go ahead. If you my name it. is mm -hmm. Tehila. Yeah, Tehila Dauna. I'm from Arima and I like to read. Really? What's the last good book you read, Tehila? I haven't been able to do much reading recently. Good answer. So I good honestly a, can't tell you. The last book, good book I read, so was my textbook. Very good answer. I like how you're <laughs> thinking. Thank you very much, Tehila. Uh, Stefana? All right, Stefana might have stepped out for a cup of tea. Renell? Um, good afternoon. Good afternoon. My my name is Ramel Alex, and I wasn't here when the first the question was asked. All right, so you're just saying your name, where you're from, general, north, south, east, or west, and something you like to do. So your name, where you're from, something you like to do. That is not illegal, immoral, or fattening. Go ahead. Okay. Um, my name is Ramel Alex, and I am from deep south. Um, How I don't deep? Really like when you say deep south, how deep, deep south? Son of what you're saying back in the day i had a friend I, anyhow that's another talk for another time i used to come down santa flora yes go down there go through the um is the fields gosh yeah oh, well in the night i used to just be saying my prayers because you know as you sometimes if i go down late there's me one coming through there i say in my prayers from the start until i come out i don't remember where but when i come back out on the other side i like thank you <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh God, it feels, God. It feels mm -hmm. so scary though. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Because when you're going through there, it's only dark and it's only you one, you know? And the yeah. car was a little shaky at best, you know? So that's why he's be praying too. Anyhow, that's another story for another time. Go ahead, Renel. Um, I don't really like to do anything too much. Um, I am a hairdresser. What you um, saying? That is great, man. Uh, yeah, that is basically it. Excellent. I, I appreciate that, Renel from Santa Flora. No problem. Gabriella, talk to me. Hi, good day. Um, mm -hmm. My name is Gabriella Etienne. I'm from Arima and I love playing music. What is it, Gabriella? You have any family? What? Let me see who is. Let me see who is like a, a teach, a lecturer, a professor over in the states. I know Etienne from Don, who went to Presentation College in San Fernando. That don't ring, name um, ring a bell? You don't know uncle or, or family? Any Etienne from any state? I have an America. I have an mm. aunt in America who in the States, but she, mm. she was a nurse then. She turned into a lecturer. Mm, OK, OK. Maybe it's, maybe it's lying family. You know, you can always tell. <laughs> What's the best thing going on in Arima these days? Let me hear. Uh, nothing, just killing butter for half mm -hmm. price. Um, oh, it was you I see on the news talking about butter. That was you? About blue band? No, 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 no. <laughs> that, okay, that was somebody that looked like you. I hear you. <laughs> Thanks very much, Gabriella. All right, Brittany. Hi, good evening, everyone. Well, I am also from Rio Claro. Um, I like what hiking. Saying? What are you saying? That is good. Where, where's the best place you went to hike, Brittany? I can't remember the worst, but the best, but I can remember oh. the worst. Which was the worst Sparta. one? Oh, Hi. Lord. Oh, 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 oh. I hear you. I am mad at you. Back in my day, yes, I went up there. You had a gumption, boy. You know, that is true. Mm. So, and if you, yes, yes, if you make a mistake, yes. And it's not like you make a mistake and, okay, bring the car, let me jump in the back seat. You understand? <laughs> Thanks a lot, Brittany. All right, um, Kadesha. All right, Kadesha stepped out for a cup yeah. of tea. Oh, you're there. Go ahead, Kadesha. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Kadesha Henry. I apologize. Go ahead, Kadesha. You hear me, sir? Yes, I am. Yes, Kadesha. Go ahead. I said, I'm from Tobago. Mm. What are you saying? All your carnival coming up just now? Yes. I hear you. I hear you. Go ahead. I like to listen to Murder Mysteries. Murder Mysteries. Ah, so it's what them on, on um, Netflix or TV or or on YouTube? On, mm -hmm. I mostly like to listen to podcasts when I'm walking or like to help me sleep and things. Mm, I hear you. You like the, what, what is it about Murder Mysteries you like? 
Some leaders always see a pattern in terms of with every individual who can who commit the crime or something. That is true, you know. Human is. behavior, it repeats yeah. itself. Thanks very much, Kadisha. Celine. Which one is Celine, sir? Oh, it has more than one Celine. It surely does. Celine with an I. Celine Isaac. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good afternoon, sir. My name is Celine Isaac. I'm from Matlat and I like sports. What is any particular sport you like, Celine? Did you play sports in secondary school? Yes, I did. What sport did you play or were you a multi-sport person? Multi-sport. Do track and field, football, netball. What distance in particular was your favorite? Long and short. Mm, 15. Oh, 1,500? And and four, oh, four is a killer. Four is a killer. That is just a long sprint. You have to have lungs like a beast. That is good, man, Celine. <laughs> well done, well done. Amelia Jones. Yes, sir. Good day, sir. Uh huh. Good day. Um, my name is Amelia Jones, and I like sports. Oh, any particular sports, Amelia? Um, track and field. Ah, did, did you run in school as well? Yeah. What distance? 100 meters, I think. Yeah. That one, you have to be technically correct. You can't afford to make any little mistake or you lost the race. Yeah. I hear you. I am out of here, Amelia. Well done. Okay, Kemi, Joseph. Hi, sir. Hi, everyone. My name is Kemi Joseph. I'm a Saudi from the Marbella area. And uh, right, right I love to jump corner. on. Yeah, and I love to jump on a plane and disappear for a little while. That's my oh, hobby. What are you saying? Uh, where was it for this year been in terms of jumping on a plane? England. Ooh, hello, Governor. What are you saying? Nice hello, farmer. Governor. Hello, Governor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yes, that, that is grand man over there, yeah. Well, the Queen just passed yeah. over there, so they're still kind of in a bit of mourning over there. But at least she, she bat yeah. for a while, huh? She bat for a while. So that is grand. <laughs> okay, thanks All a lot right, there, Kenny. All You're right, welcome. so who's next? Celine? Celine with an E. Celine Lalu. Hi, sir. Um, Hello. My name is Celine Lalu. I'm from Rio Caro, and I like dancing. What kind of dancing do you like to do, Celine? Um, well, I'm a part of an East Indian. What are you saying? We're watching your slide. Well, I know this fella <laughs> named Alan who they sing chutney. He might be looking for some dancers. I'll see if I could give it to you. You hook up, all right? Yeah, I'm going to check you already. <laughs> oh, you don't check you already for when you go on to win the, the Calypso, Calypso Monarch, all right? That is very good, Celine. I am mad at you. Kadina? Hi, sir. Hi, everyone. My name is Kadina Lewis. I'm from Point Fortin, and I like to sing. Sing? What kind of thing you could sing? Could you sing Ave Maria, Kadina? No, sir. I like a spell. You, you could sing Ave Maria? No, sir. <laughs> Look at how you're laughing at me, Kadina. It's only jealousy, envy is a hell of a thing, you know. Envy is a... Oh, how I wish I could sing like sir. That is what's going through your mind. How I wish I could sing like sir. <laughs> Yes, sir. Oh, God, I'm just teasing you, Kadina. Thanks a lot. Abigail? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Abigail? Hi, sir. Hi, everybody. My name is Abigail Lewis Wills. I'm from Shook Bonus, and I enjoy reading. Reading? What last good book other than a textbook you read you could remember reading, Abigail? To be honest, sir, right now I'm reading a set of Nancy Drew books because I have this desire What's to, to, to finish oh. all that's in the back. Back in times, a, boy. Back in times. Go. They're going back in times there, boy. I mean, yes, Nancy Drew and Hardy Boys time. What you saying? Yeah, those are very mm -hmm. nice. That was before Web and all of that come in. I am mad at you. Thanks, Abigail. Afia, Lloyd. Good afternoon, sir. Mm -hmm. Good afternoon. I'm well. My name is Afia Lloyd, and I'm from South Trinidad. Gasparillo, to be exact. Um, what I like the most, um, well, I love learning. I love education. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think I'm addicted to it at this point. Um, mm -hmm. Just love studying. And I also love helping my children with their work, getting them involved in education and studying too. So nothing, yeah. nothing better than giving a good example, you know? I think it was Confucius yeah. who said there's nothing more pleasant in life than to pass on to others what one has learned for oneself. 
you know, and in your doing what you are doing, you know, it's setting an excellent example for your children. Well done. Okay, Thank Sharana. Good day, sir. My name is Sharana Lachman. I am from Chagonas and I love to sing and I also dance East Indian dance. What you're saying? I know somebody I could hook you up with Sharana and they both all they, all they could join troops and sing for and, and join Alan and I'll be watching for all you come, car, come carnival when you wanna. Maybe not this year. It might be a little bit early. Well, not next year. So in 2024 for sure. All right? Okay, sir. All right, Sharana. Thanks a lot. Amoya? Yes, sir. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Amoya. I'm from Tobago, and I listen to music. What are you saying? I understand you will be singing with Marshall. Marshall coming down for a carnival? No. Um, no? I don't know. Oh, okay. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I oh, yeah. not, not wanting to offend or anything. You're not really into the carnival thing on, and so on? No. Nah. Oh, okay, yeah. fair enough. I hope I didn't uh -uh. offend by, by saying as much. But you like to no, sing. No, 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 no. I know some people no. will be like, oh, ting ling ling, and then next thing I get a letter from pastor, from pastor, whoever. Oh, what ungodly things you stole my door, my sister today in class. In G no, I just don't want that to happen. All right, so Amoya, what kind of singing? You could sing you mentioned. No, sir, sir, I can't sing. I love Oh, you yeah, can't. You like to listen to music. I can't With a T. I hear no. you. It was lost in yes, uh, I can't sing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. Any particular things you like to listen to? Gospel. <laughs> no, no, no. Right, you just like to listen to gospel. Sir, mm -hmm. No, I like to listen to a bit of everything. I like to listen to a bit of Oh, okay. R and B. Ah, that's old school you're talking about, or or the newer ones. Both. Both. I hear you. I'm not mad at you. It was very nice, you know, to listen to it, to hear somebody else express the thoughts that you might be having. Thanks very much. All right. So who's next? That was Afia. Is it Sharana next? So I already went. Okay, Amoya. I was, sure. I was not yeah, I was That was just talking. a Moya. Okay, I lost track yeah. anything. Shiraza, sorry. Hi everyone. My name is Shazara Mohammed. My from apologies. Pakistan. My apologies. I said Shiraza. Shazara. I enjoy I'm from Barapon. I enjoy baking and cooking. What you saying? What you could cook with your eyes closed, Shazara? Hmm, probably pasta. Mm -mm, what you saying? Lasagna, you could do lasagna. Nah. What about um what pasta you like to you can probably cook the best? Your um, own creation is knock it up and is you call it Shazara's pasta? Uh maybe yeah, Alfredo. Mm -mm -mm. That's good. Yeah, I like Alfredo as well with that white sauce. It really goes down nice. Thanks a lot, Shazara. Okay, Jade. Hi everyone. My name is Jade Nicholas. I am from Penal, South Trinidad. And I like watching Murder Mysteries. Ah, oh, Murder Mysteries. What was the last good Murder Mystery you, you, um, you watched? Well, probably one where a man or, a man or kitty wife and he had to figure out how. Mm -hmm, it was mm -hmm. nice. I know, is it, there's this, um, I don't know if you watch it, Another 48 Hours? Or, you know, I think I watched it, that. Yeah, I, or, I not Another 48 remember. Hours, sorry, it's 48 Hours. It's, a, it's on, I forget oh. what network. But I know they tell you that, you know, the probability of solving a crime increases if they could, you know, get the suspect within the first 48 hours. 48 hours with the police. Yeah. Yes, correct. On TV. I watched that. Yeah, that one is, yeah. is quite interesting to see how they figure it out. All right. Okay. Thanks a lot. All right. Let's see who's next. Jenny? Good day. Uh, my name is Jenny Peters. I'm from Santa Cruz, North Trinidad, and I enjoy kind of like... Well, recently I started binging Jeffrey Dahmer thing on Netflix, but I like reading. And the last book I read was Alchemist. Mm, Alchemist. Uh -huh. With the Alchemist, what do we turn in? St straw into gold? With the with the Alchemist. So what was that one about? Was it, about it was like a live book by Puello, Puello or something. So. Oh, oh. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Nice, good man. It's always good. This is good to read, you know, and it definitely helps in terms of what you're doing now. Thanks a lot. All right. 
So who's next? Hadassah. Hi, so hi everyone. My name is Hadassah Picha. I'm from Tobago and I enjoy cooking. What are you saying? Hadassah, talk to me. Why is you could cook? So I enjoy doing um, Sunday lunch. So, so when Sunday come, I like to do a little macaroni pie, callaloo, baked chicken, potato salad. I love that. Mm -mm. You leave all this stew chicken. You, you mentioned stew chicken? Oh, no, I didn't say stew. I said bake. But oh, stew bake. does go nice too. Oh, yeah, too. so either way. What is the most important ingredient you need for stew chicken? Let me hear you. Your coconut milk. Eh, the pot. The pot. <laughs> you know, the right pot, it don't make sense. <laughs> Thanks a lot. It is Palladia Lake. Thanks very much. All right. All right. Who's next? Well, Chloe mentioned she having a little um, issue with internet. Not a problem, Chloe. You sent it online. Uh, Paul? Paul Ramsujit. All right. He might be having a step out for a little cup of tea. Crystal, Crystal Ruiz. Hi. Good evening, sir. Good evening, everyone. I'm from Cochrane, Port of Spain. I like dancing, folk, and back in times, and hiking. What are you saying? Have you ever been to the Paria Waterfalls? No, the mermaid, the mermaid pool. I'm supposed to go to the mm. Paria for next year. Mm, what are you saying? That is good, man. That is good. I could hook you up with somebody in the class who like to go on on um on hiking as well. It's a very good form of exercise. So I imagine. Yeah, really here. nice. It's really nice. Thanks, Crystal. Selena. Hi. Selena. Hi everyone. My name is Selena. Super sad. I'm from Central and I enjoy family time, reading and watching Netflix. The last book I read was The Fault in Our Stars by John Green. Mm. And uh, what, what what made you um interested in it? You know, what, um, the, the movie. Mm -hmm. Ah, yes. that's good. That is good. Yeah, it's always again to you know reading and even seeing it in movie form. You found that the book was a lot different than the movie. Sort of, yes. Yeah, sometimes you know yeah. it's all about interpretation. Thanks a lot, yeah. Selena. Um, Almas. Oh, that was Crystal. Crystal. Hello. Good day. Yes, Alma. Hello. Yes. Mm -hmm. Hi, yes, so good day. Mm -hmm. um, my name is Alma Solomon. I'm from the East Arima. Um, I love working out. <laughs> I love exercising. I love um, spin class. I used to teach spin class a few years ago. What you um, saying? I haven't, taught it. <laughs> I haven't taught it in a few years, but um, I miss it. But. Hey. I when the time you, is yeah. right, you'll come back. And then it had COVID, it threw <laughs> off the rhythm of plenty of people. So don't worry, you'll bounce back. You'll bounce back. Yeah. All right, great. Thanks, Almas. Selena, did I get you? Mm -hmm. what did yes, I sir. Oh, I got you. Excellent. Michelle Van der Poel Kite. Oh. Good afternoon, sir. What was mm -hmm. the question? Okay, so what's your name? Just state your name, where you're from, and something you like to do that is not illegal, immoral, or fat being. <laughs> okay, my name is Michelle Van der I live at Sangi Randy. I love exercising. What you saying? Um, I, could, I could hook you up with somebody who used to be on a spin bicycle. Maybe she could start a class. Uh, we already been hooked up. What you saying? You've been hooked up. Well, that's a good yeah, thing, man. I love spin class. <laughs> Small will after all. Small will after all. Thanks a lot, Michelle. Okay, Latifa. Mm -hmm. Hi, sir. Good day. Mm -hmm. um, my name is Latifa Bloom. I am originally from North, mm -hmm. uh, but currently living in South, and I love to go shopping. Okay, I am mad with your shopping. is good. Where do you do it? Online or in the malls, or it do make a difference? So anyway, it doesn't matter. I hear you. I'm not mad at you. Thanks, Latifa. Did I leave out anybody in terms of the introductions? Anybody yes, like yes, sir. sir. Okay, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. My name is Natalie, and I am from Freeport. Um, it's a pleasure to have you again, sir. What are you saying? Yes, I was very disappointed, though, that you wasn't a lecturer. Mm. 
Well, don't worry. You're, you're but I'm happy that yes. you're here this rounds mm -hmm, as my mm -hmm. lab instructor. Mm -hmm. okay, um, it, this is my fourth year with Costat. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, I ain't liking nothing these days but my but me time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. me time. Hey, and you speak a lot, you talk a lot there, you know. It's always important to look out for number one, not so. And you know, in particular, more, more, more so that you know, we came out of COVID. They speak about that. You know, you have to think about yourself in terms of looking out for number one. So I'm not mad at you at all in that regard. Yes, it's very hard to put all the hours that I put in out every day, waking up half five mm. and finishing my day at twelve in the night. Mm. So and then the to little do it time again. I get for myself, yes, mm -hmm. the little time I get for myself, just be like heaven. I hear you, but don't worry. When you go on your book tour. You'll be talking about it. I remember when I used to, <laughs> and it will actually make the sales of your book go up even more. But that's very good what you do. Everything is but for a time, so don't worry. Longest rope by my end. Thanks very much for sharing that. All right. So who's next? That was Natalie. Thanks very much. Mm -hmm. Who's next? Okay, I believe it's me. Yes, good afternoon, okay. everyone. I am Stefana Marie Duff. I live in South Trinidad, specifically. Princess Dong, and oh, I like to mm -hmm. bake and read. Read, bake and read. I hear you. What you could bake really good? You're good with bread? I'm good at making bread, but I prefer <laughs> to make cinnamon rolls and cakes. Mm -mm. What you say? Nice, good man. Nice, good. Um, cake. Well, pound cake. You could do pound cake. I never tried a pound cake before. Mm -hmm. My specialty is chocolates. Mm -mm. What you say, nice, good man. It's always good to know how to bake for yourself. In particular, the prices are things, eh? And it don't normally taste good so as good outside as when you bite inside. Thanks very much, Stefana. Did I forget anybody else? Or did everybody introduce himself or herself? All right. Seems everybody introduced. All right. So let's go. You all seeing the PowerPoint? Everybody introduce themselves? Yeah, I see any PowerPoint. Everybody introduce or anybody has to go? Or are we good? So I'm not seeing the PowerPoint. Um, I have no PowerPoint. No PowerPoint, you're not seeing anything? No, sir. Yeah, yeah but wrong that was a party time was the PowerPoint. <laughs> so I'm seeing an almanac. You see not almanac. Yeah. Oh, you're seeing oh, yes, a change. Yes, sir. Okay, well, okay, great. Well, the fact that what you're seeing, yeah, that's the PowerPoint. My bad. You all seeing it break down now? Yes, sir. Right. Okay. Great. And normal, normal screen misbehaving. Slideshow. Oh, from current slide. Okay, all right, so let's go. So welcome to the course. So I bring you greetings from Dr. Gillian Paul, the president of COSTAT, Ms. Anjani Dwarka, who is the Dean, School of Nursing, Health and Environmental Sciences um, Studies, sorry, Ms. Delamay Wilson, who's the chair of the of, our, of my department, the course coordinator, you all know her very well as your lecturer, Dr. Saida Sattar. And my name is Dr. Patrick Campbell, and I'm very happy to be your lab lecturer. Now, in terms of the semester duration, as you well know, it started on the 12th, it's gonna finish on the 29th. Now, in, for the requirements, I don't really ask much in terms of, um, from from the from the students themselves and just three things one the grades are not given you really have to earn them there'll be no makeup so please just try to get, uh, do the assignments when they are given there are not many assignments here in terms of the grade the total grade is 20 percent consists of 10 sessions out of those 10 sessions two of the sessions are assessments the assessments will be on a Sunday. On Sunday, we're giving you a window from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. The assessment will be open. The assessment itself will be 45 minutes to an hour long. All right, but you have a window on Sunday from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. to actually do the two assessments. Each of those assessments is 6%, 6 so 6 plus 6 is 12. And the other eight handing assignments, each one is 1%. So 6 by 2 is 12, 8 by 1 is 8. 
20%, that is your lab grade. It comes to 20% of your final SNF grade, all right? Um, ask that you be respectful to your colleagues and your teacher. You might not like me, I am mad at you, but please don't try to embarrass me in front of the class. You know, if there's anything, try to reach me, you know, privately, WhatsApp, instant message, phone me, or what have you not. But please, it doesn't look good, you know, for confrontations to occur in front of the class. So I wish I did it privately where I am concerned. On the topic of requirements, sometimes I like to ask this, you know, for the students themselves. So what is it that you all require um, of me, you know, in terms of, of your lecturer? What, what is it you all, you all want? Anything? This is the only time I ask. Anything in particular you all require of me as a lecturer? So we just, we just want to be able to pass the 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 course. Mm -hmm. right? We have most oh, yeah. of us. You can only speak for yourself, have... Alan. You can only no speak sense. to yourself unless he has a cla cla appointed classroom. So no, change it to the talking singular. To, talking to other persons in the class. Hearsay, hearsay. Have... If it's what yes. judge you need, it's call it hearsay. Yes. So he doesn't right. speak any singular. And speak for yourself. <laughs> we, got, we, we got recommendations that you are mm -hmm. one of the best persons to, to, to learn this bio from. So um there was a like I, I could see a little excitement to, to 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 join the lab. What you're saying. I hope I don't disappoint. Thank you very much, Alan. But yeah, um yeah. So in terms of passing club, I see no reason why you shouldn't. It is not exceptionally difficult. Anybody else? Sharana, yeah. Flexible as well, so. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Flex, flexible in terms of uh, the timing. So, so in terms of the 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 um the marking, as I mentioned, eight. So is eight assign is eight worksheets you have to give in. It's group assignments in terms of them being given in, and it's one per group. So in terms of the flexibility, is really how you get on, you know, within your group. I have nothing to do with what happened in your group. All I'm really concerned about is getting the assignment. And once I get the assignment, the entire group gets the same grade, right, where that is concerned. I, I shouldn't see that too much of a problem. If within your group you find that there's an issue evolving, you know, just let me know. Some people really find that, you know, things really out of hand. But other than that, um, things should flow smoothly. And as I said, in terms of being accommodating, put the assessment on Sunday. So therefore, the, on the days of the assessment, right, the Tuesday would be revision for you. You wouldn't have a, any Zoom class per se. So yeah, I've been flexible in terms of trying to accommodate you all in that regard, okay? Anything else? So I hear you in terms of being flexible. Try my best in that regard. But in terms of if you miss, sorry, I'll have to be, I'll have a whole firm on that. You know, some people, as they say, some people is muddy the water for others, unfortunately, you know, and some persons have, you know, have done that. So, which is sad, but c'est la vie. All right. So no makeup, <laughs> no makeup for that is concerned. Yeah. So unless it's an emergency, an emergency, then you will consider. No, <laughs> no, because as I said, <laughs> believe you me, you know, when people muddy the water for you, you know, they, they muddy it for you. So we had a whole firm on, on that line, you know, that um, if you miss, you miss. But in terms of being accommodating, you give you a large window and let you know from in front, you have a seven hour window on a Sunday in which to take the assessment, you know? So that's the best I could do. But just remember, it's just 20%. Um, so if you do happen to miss it, well, you know, it wouldn't kill your grade. It wouldn't, you know, uh, destroy you. I remember back in my day, everything was 100%. You know, just one one off exam. If you miss it, well, that is it. But this is just part of your film grade. So I would just, I'll give you the dates in just a little bit. So whatever you would do, I strongly recommend that you make accommodation. And it's not difficult. It's online. So on the day itself, you, wherever you are, you could take your lunch, just take your lunch or what have you not, and just do it. But um, that's the best in terms of accommodation. I wouldn't be able to go beyond that. And if you do miss it, yeah, I wouldn't be able to give you any makeup. So just saying that up front. So, you know, people do get it mixed up, okay? All right, anything else where? I'm glad you asked, so we could just clear that up. Anything else? Uh-huh. 
All right, so nothing else. So in terms of contact information, right, these are my office hours. There's my phone during office hours. I could call them my WhatsApp phone. Um, I, I understand I will be added to, to the WhatsApp group. And where the WhatsApp group, I am not an administrator. I am but, you know, present in the group. And I thank you for allowing me to be in the group. Whatever you say in the group will not be held against you. I will not quote it. So feel free to speak your mind. I am just a member. It is outside of the purview of Custard. So you wouldn't have an issue there. So just remember that. You know, don't think I wouldn't make any comment on anything you say there. I'm just there for you to contact me quickly, right? Or conversely, if I'm going to miss a class or something, to just let you know. All right. Uh, you could also email me, but I, I would strongly recommend you use the WhatsApp group. Um, for class etiquette, you know, just try in terms of quote unquote speaking in, in the class, you know, just try to raise your hand. Do respect your colleagues. Some people might have a greater store knowledge than others, you know, try not to laugh at persons, you know, in the class. I remember I often like to tell this story to my students. You'll have my physics teacher to thank for me being here. Because when I was in form three, I remember asking a question and he embarrassed me in front of the class and I just never asked any more questions. I was so glad to finish physics at, you know, O level, or keep as they call it now. And um, that was it. So I, when I was going to do A levels, I was like, no way I'm going to do physics. So I switched <laughs> to biology. So I guess in a way, I'm a physics teacher at the time. But I always remember that. So if ever I embarrass you in class, if I laugh at something you say, I have, I will um, actually give you a voucher for $200 that to, uh, redeemable at KFC, right? Because I have no right to laugh at anything you say. Everything you say is very important to me, right? So I just want you to know that. So do feel free to speak your mind, you know, when you're in class, when a question is asked. So if you have anything, you know, just speak it to know that I will not laugh at you. But if I do, you know, you're getting a nice little voucher for um, a meal, a nice meal at KFC, okay? Um, cell phone. Um, if you happen to know we online, you know, do be mindful. Try not to use it. Take it off or take your mic off before you use it. And in terms of the class itself, so, you know, the class is three hours. And this is the breakdown of how the class goes. So you expect it to review the PowerPoint notes, review the topic links from 2.40 to 15. The Zoom class is from 3.30 to 4.30. And then you're, you're submitting your group worksheets. Now, originally, it was supposed to be on the day itself. Once I see all your behaving on yourselves, I have a little flexibility I'll build in there. I'll give you all a couple of days to actually submit it. In fact, I'll give you till the next class day to submit it. So once everything going kosher and people submitting it, it will stay like that. But if I realize people slacking off, I will go back to that one day and have you submit by the end of the day, okay? So the two assessments, as I mentioned, they're on Sunday. The first one is on the 6th of November and the second one is on the 11th of December. And that's it, there's two assessments and the rest is the worksheets. You're already in groups and the worksheets, one person from each group will be submitting. So just one person from each group will be submitting for that group. And that's it. All right, any questions? Any further questions? Mm -hmm. uh, in detail about the spotter assessments. The spotters? Okay, so the spotter will be based on everything that came before. It's not cumulative. The second one is not cumulative. So it's up until the work. So just go through. I don't know if I could go on the, the page itself. Just now. You'll see in the um you'll see in some a word document. So we see the e classroom. Right, the e classroom. Excellent. Okay. So right, so there's today's session, which we'll go through shortly. So you have one, two. So in terms of these topics, the topics will appear um, in due course. So you have organization of the human body. Micro, microscopy on the cell, tissues and integumentary, and then the skeletal system, axial and appendicular, and then you have your first. So the first one will be based on these, the appendicular, the axial, 
skeletal system, tissues, and the integumentary, microscopy, and the cell and organization of the human body. All right. So as we go along, these sections will be open currently. These two sections are open, so they'll be open two at a time. All right. So you'll have a, a two week window to know what these are. So how what will be the format of the assessment itself? Uh, MCQ will be a significant portion. I haven't set it yet, but MCQs will be a significant portion of it. But it will be based on the items which we have done in from these sessions. Okay. Okay, so far. All right. Okay, so let's go. Let's have a look then um, at today's session. Yeah. Okay. Everybody okay? I hear everybody quiet, like people crying and so on. Yeah. So so somebody I lied. This person can difficult. Choice questions. Huh? Someone ask if the, the exam, the assessment is multiple choice questions. Part of it. I, um, I did mention, I haven't set it yet, but it would have multiple choice questions. Will it be all? I don't know, but if a significant part will be multiple choice. I haven't decided yet it will have structured as well, but it has not been set as yet. So to answer your question, yes, there will be multiple choice. Will the whole thing be multiple choice? I cannot say at this point. As we go along, I will let you know, okay? No problem, thanks. All right. So let's go. So organization of the human body. Human body, it's incredible. Yeah, it's a machine. It's a very interesting and it is very well organized. And when we're thinking about the organization of the human body, it is organized. Look at this inside. You know, when you, you'll see this in your professional career in terms of dice, um, when you're looking at autopsies or if you're looking in theater you know, when you're doing surgeries and so on, when you're, when you're in there. And you would see that the torso, the human torso, we have different parts associated with it. So here we see we have our liver, which is the largest organ by mass in the body. Here we have the stomach, and the stomach comes at the end of the esophagus, which goes all the way to the mouth, right? So the, and when you eat something, yum, 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 it goes to the mouth, right down the esophagus. And then it goes into the stomach. From the stomach, it goes into your small and then your large intestine. Let me ask this question. Which one is longer? Your small intestine or your large intestine? Which one longer? So it's small? small yeah. Intestine. yeah, which is interesting. Funny, you know, the small intestine is actually longer. Where, the, where does digestion begin? Now, this is off the topic because I know we haven't done digestion, but just asking. When you, when you think about digestion, mouth. digestion begins in the mouth. Yeah, thanks very much, Michelle. So digestion begins in the mouth, right? When you chew something, nom, 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 right? It mixes with saliva and then it's then swallowed. Saliva has in it some digestive juices, particularly salivary amylase, which will act on starches. You will look at that more when you look specifically at digestion, but digestion starts in the mouth. I think we can identify with it. When you smell a good barra, you know, and you smell the kuchila and the special sauce, what is happening? Your mouth starts to secrete saliva. And the reason why it's secreting that saliva is in preparation because it's expecting to get food. So it begins to secrete these saliva, because you know that food coming next, I eat doubles and then it right chews it up and then you swallow it and then it comes down to your stomach. What does your stomach do? And it is general, you don't have to get too specific. What does your stomach do? It breaks down the food, yeah. Right? So it's like a pouch. And you know, very interestingly enough, anybody here, I know somebody mentioned that they like to cook pasta. Um, it's believed that way back in the like, whatever, I don't quote me on which century, but how, how was cheese originally um, made? Anybody has a, how, how they figured out how to make cheese? It has to do with the stomach. I think they use um, an enzyme found in one of the stomachs. Of a <laughs> Very good. Yeah, Reddit. Yeah, found in the lining of the stomach of a cow. So back in the day, you don't find this look like a pouch. They used to use the stomach, the stomach of animals, particularly the cow and sheep. They used to use them as pouches to carry liquids like water and wine and milk. 
So, you know, as the story goes, the proverbial one, one of those days, you know, well, yes, they're using it to carry it. And maybe they didn't wash it out too good, you know, the lining. So it still had the enzyme rennet, which is present in the lining of the stomach. It was present and they, the person was carrying meat, sorry, milk. Was, and he was riding a horse. He went from point A to B, shaken up. So when he reached on the, at point B, you know, I was going to drink some milk to his um, amazement, it split into two, right? It curds and whey, liquid part, right? And then the curds, right, which is a solid part. Well, you know, it was repeated and then they started to put salt on it. In essence, cheese is really compressed curds, right? You just put salt on it and you compress it, you get cheese. And then they put it to eat. But that is how they actually discovered that rennet, how to split the milk in two. Right, it was by accident it happens, and a lot of experiments or a lot of discoveries also occur by accident. Yeah, one of the greatest ones or greater ones in the 20th century, 21st century, sorry, was had has one to do with fighting infection. Anybody know that story? It was by accident as well. A drug was discovered, and it was an antibiotic, one of the first antibiotics to be discovered to fight infection. Right, it begins with P. And it rhymes with, Hello. there you go, thank you, penicillin, right? From the Pelicinium bacteria, yeah. So according to the story, you know, Alexander Fleming, he was growing, well, they grow bacteria, you know, on plates, on agar plates. And he left it open, you know, he left one of the, um, where they were growing it, you know, the incubator, he left it open, the door, the incubator open, and some, uh, some things got in and when he looked on it the next day when he looked at the plates he was going to throw them out because the the incubator was open he noticed that on one of them there was a circle now the thing with bacteria what do they do bacteria when they find a source of food right they're greedy they'll start to eat and not only do they eat they produce something that will kill other bacteria so actually bacteria produce antibiotics so this particular bacteria the penicillium Right, it produced an uh, it produced this substance to kill the other bacteria, because they were growing on this plate called an agar plate. Now this agar plate is actually made from seaweed as food. So it's that is equivalent of imagine you're going to buy KFC, right? And suddenly you see all you could eat for a dollar, and you look down on the ground and you see a dollar, man, you know. So you pick up the dollar, right, and you get your cash, and you know you're eating, but you see other people coming in. So what you want to do, right? You want to get rid of them. So let's like say you pick up some bone and you build a fence, you build a fence around KFC, so only you can eat. In essence, that's the same thing bacteria do. When they get a source of food, they actually produce something. In this case, they produce an antibiotic to actually kill off the other bacteria. And how you know it killing them off? Because you'll see around it, you'll see the space where nothing grew in. And that's how he figured out. When he looked, you know, he saw a small thing and then around it, he saw this space. And he was like, hello, a small growth. And around it, you know, nothing. Everything else, all over the plate was, you know, things were growing, but around this thing, he saw nothing. And when he checked, it was a penicillium. And when he checked, uh, you know, investigated, it was secreting this antibiotic and they isolated it and he called it, uh, it's from a mold, penicillium. And then he just called it uh, penicillin because it came from the penicillin mold. And that was it. And the rest is history, penicillin. Now, how important is antibiotics? Put it in perspective. When you look at the civil war in the US, more people died from infection than actually died from battle. Yeah. So we're talking about hundreds of thousands of persons, if not millions of persons died from infection, more than were actually killed in the battle, you know, when they had the civil war. So it was a big problem in terms of infection. And as medical practitioners, you appreciate that the worst word you could hear in medicine is actually infection is a really bad word so you want to get rid of it. and that's why we have antibiotics to thank for so a lot of things happen by accident so what do you have to remember what that scientists are what they are good lookers not necessarily good looking all right with the exception of course of dr campbell he both good looking and he's a good looker not so Everybody's silent. Everybody should be yeah. beaten. Yes, yes, sir. yes, sir. definitely. Yeah, yes, sir. Well, it should be beaten, yeah. the, you know, beaten the desk like if it's parliament. Sure. Yes, yes. I agree 100%. Sure, I see, sir. I'm asking a question. Go ahead. Go ahead. I should call him not the professor. 
regarding Naughty <laughs> Professor. Yes, I think so with Dr. Klum. Yes, the similarities do occur. Okay, yes. okay, okay, okay. All right, so let's go forward. So here we see the stomach, right? So here's the stomach. From here, we go to the small intestine and then to the large intestine. We mentioned that this is longer. How much more longer it is than the large intestine? Is it two times as long, four times as long, or 10 times as long? Two. Two, okay, that's a good guess. Anybody else? Is it twice as long, four times as long, or 10 times as long? Four. Okay, we say four. All right, to make life simple, it is four, quite so. So it is four times as long, the small intestine. So on average, in terms of the length, think about the height of a woman. So the average height of a woman is what, five feet long? I don't like to use the, the measure of a foot, right? Three feet is a, approximately a meter. So one and um, two thirds of a meter, so about 1.7 meters, but it's easier to round it off in terms of feet. So it's about five feet long in terms of the large intestine and the small intestine is four times that. So this is about 20 feet, 20 to 21 feet in length is the small intestine. So do remember that conversion that your large intestine is approximately the height of a woman, right? Five feet tall. And the small intestine is four, is like the length of four women, all right? So do remember that, that conversion in terms of small. Let me ask this question. Why do you think the small intestine is so long? So it is much, we mentioned it is 20 feet long. So what does it do? What's the major function that occurs in the small intestine? One word, it begins with A. Absorption. Absorb. Yeah, yeah it absorbs. All right, very good. All right, so absorption of nutrients occurs in the small intestine. Right? So that's why it is so long relative to the large intestine. You do have absorption. There's one thing in particular the large intestine absorbs. And what is that? Water and salt. Water in particular, yeah, and salt, right? So when the large intestine is not working properly, right? So what do you think your stools will be? Will they be firm or will they be watery? If the large intestine is not working properly. Watery? Watery. It'll be, watery. Yeah, it'll be watery. You'll get watery stools. Anybody here ever had diarrhea? Yep. This morning, yep. sir. Ooh. Ooh. Why you take for it? Where's a, where's a surefire remedy for diarrhea? Something you could find in the, in the kitchen. Anybody? Two things you could put together. <laughs> Flour. Thank you. Flour and water. Yeah. Anybody ever heard of that one? I never know you could use that. Yeah, it, it works. Now, I was skeptical, believe you me, but it really works and it works very well. So you're just making it, you know, you're training the flour in water and you're mixing it up, you know, till it look like milk kind of thing. That, you know, you ain't making it like, you know, do. You just paint the flour and mix it up and drink it. And it really works well. So, you know, if you know, you don't have anything on hand, flour and water for diarrhea in particular. Um, it, it works very well. So always, you know, do remember that. If it is, you know, yeah, yeah, don't have anything else. Well, what about drinking a lot of fluids also? Drinking a lot of fluids. Uh, in terms of flushing out, if it has a toxin in terms of flushing it out, that could work, but it might exacerbate, it might still cause it. Well, it all depends. If you're drinking fluids and you see you're holding it in, you're not getting watery stools anymore, by all means continue. But if you see that you are drinking your water and your stools coming out watery, well, you might want to, you know, step back from that. But that, that is a possibility. In particular, if there's a toxin you want to flush out. Yeah. Okay. So, okay, sir. Uh -huh. so we mentioned water, right? Water going down. If, we, if the large intestine is not working properly, it could cause watery stools to come out. All right, let's move forward. But notice in terms of the torso, note how neat is packed in. Everything is packed in, right? You have your liver, you have your stomach and all of these things. And this is the, you know, your digestive tract you're looking at, but notice how everything is, is compact, you know? It really is interesting. All right, now we're looking at the cardiovascular system here. So this is your heart and the different vein, your portal vein. This is around your liver. Kidneys, right, we have a pair of them. Why do we have two kidneys and not just one kidney? Could we live with one kidney? 
Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So the reason why we have two then is what? I would have begin with B. And what happens when you put a car in reverse? Let me go back. <laughs> yeah, back up. That's why you have two kidneys. You have one in back up. Are there any other organs in which you have two of them in the body? Lungs. The lungs. Yeah. Could you live with one lung? Yeah. The current Pope, Pope Francis, when he was in his teenage years, when he was about 18, he had a lung infection. And um, they actually had to remove a significant portion of his one of his lungs. And for all intents and purposes, he just had one lung from since age 18. He's now well into his 70s, if not early 80s. So that means for more than 50 years, he has survived on one lung. So it is possible. And that's why you have two lungs. What about your liver? Do you have two livers? No. 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 No, but instead you have one big liver, right? The liver is the largest organ by mass in the body itself. So you have a large liver there. And why do you have a large liver? Well, each of the cells, the hepatocytes, they do the same thing, right? It's repeated over and over and over. And why is that? So in case you get injuries, that, you know, it could be, you could actually still work. Now, for persons, what is one of the major issues that go on with liver? Particularly when you think about alcoholics, they get a disease. What is cirrhosis. that? Cirrhosis of the liver. Now, with a cirrhotic liver, when you think about it this way, right, the liver could actually, you could lose about half of your liver and it will still function. So when you see persons have liver failure due to cirrhosis, I mean, it's approximately more than half of the liver gone and it's not functioning. Interestingly enough, the liver is one of the few organs that the cells could regenerate. But under certain circumstances when persons are taking in large amounts of alcohol, well, they just can't regenerate, right? So in a case like that, yes, go ahead. How much is 10% of that of liver? 50%. Or if 10% if ten gone, would your liver function? Yeah. Yeah. No, what I'm asking is, I heard somebody was able to function on 10%. Oh, well, okay. It, one of the things you have to remember, right? When they when they speak in general, you know, give estimates. They're talking about generalities, you know, across. A, and when they make these claims, this is by viewing population, you know, particular cohorts or persons with similar characteristics or ethnicity, age, sex nationalities and so on. And they make a generalization about the group. So of course you will have outliers. You would have persons, let's say with 10% who still function and so on, sure, right? So genetically there's just some persons who are predisposed to do remarkable things. So whereas what the text or what the literature will tell you that, okay, 50%, you know, you could live with 50%, um, there would be persons who will push the envelope. Because as I said, you know, when they do give those percentages, it's from a group of persons. So you would have some persons within the group who just genetically, they're just phenomenal, you know? I'm sure some of you could identify, for those of us who, you know, take drinks and so on, when you go to the lab, you recognize that, sorry, when you go to the bar, it have some people, they could keep drinking and it's not a problem, you know? <laughs> They just function normally and they just train down drinks. Right? So I have some persons you give them a beer and they're telling you everybody family secrets, you know, they're telling you their secrets. So it's all about we are all different. So to answer your question, could somebody perform? Yeah, you do have extremes. Yes. Okay, answer your question. Yes. Yes, sir. Okay, Michelle, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. So this is the human torso showing the lungs, right? Your liver, as you mentioned, uh, cirrhosis of the liver, mm -hmm. right? You could still live, I write it um, about less than 50%. But for persons who have liver failure, that's just a put in perspective. Dude. I mean, more than half of the liver gone, you know, it's, it's something. But always remember alcoholism is a disease, right? So do remember it and it should be treated accordingly. Okay, let's go. All right, so here's the torso. Again, this is just showing you the different parts. What is this organ here? I forget. What is this one here? The yeah. heart. That's the heart. Yeah, it's the heart. Right, this is the midline here. All right, so this is where your sternum or your breastbone usually runs. So in terms of the heart, what direction does the tip or the apex of the heart point? To the left or to the right? To the left. To the, the left. left. 
always remember that this is the left side and this is the right side. Some people just get mistaken, yeah? But this is the left and this is the right. Could you have an instance where the heart is on this side, pointing this way, on the right side? And will that person be alive? So is it consistent with life if your heart is on the right side? And the answer is? I don't know. I'm not sure, sir. 50 50. If you had to make a guess, what you would say? If your heart, you know, on the right side, you know, pointing this way, would you, could you still be alive? If it's on that side and all the necessary veins and everything connected, well, yeah, but, you know, it's just the direction. And the answer if, is yes, yes. So it's a condition. <laughs> yeah, so it actually is consistent with life. In, um, it doesn't happen very often, but it does. And have I seen it in my professional career? Absolutely not. But any textbook will tell you that, that, you know, having it on the right side. And what is that called? There's a particular name when your heart is on the right side. Anybody knows what that is called? Says I think is 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 that your cardio or something so. Uh, there you go. Yes, yes, yes. Right. So, uh, right. so I might be pronouncing it wrong. I don't remember exactly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. I think it's that your something. Right. So you could have it where it's pointing um to the to the right side. Uh, dextra cardio. Right, oh, so okay, when okay. it's on the right side, so you, you got it right. Where the apex or this part is pointing this way, and it is consistent in life, um, but it doesn't happen very often. Now, why do I say that? That is one of the things you know they tell physicians that <laughs> if somebody comes into your office, you know, and you put when you start this scope and you're not hearing anything, you're this person in front of your life, you know, instincts will be telling you to do what, run out of the office and keep running. Right? Clearly, something is wrong, but. You know, you always have to sound, you know, play it over on the other side, right? Because it might be just the rare instance. It's very, very rare, but there are some persons like that. I'll send it in the chat. I'll send some, um, let me see if I could send the x-ray uh, for you. Of, um, send it in the chat. Um, So can there be like a medical issue or something that happens where somebody they born normal and so for they had to point into the left side and let's say like an accident and it switch? Nah. Okay. Well, okay. Let me just say this much. In terms of my knowledge, that wouldn't happen. All right. Um, so this has to happen, true, but yeah. And the reason why, because remember, all your plumbing, as somebody mentioned before, all the plumbing and wiring how to happen for it to be on that side. So, you know, it's not like one day the heart is like, hmm, you know what, let me flip over the breastbone, yeah? Mm, excuse me. <laughs> nah, it doesn't happen that way. All the plumbing and wiring, everything else, remember you have your lungs, and above here, remember you have your sternum, you have your ribs, right? You have muscles, you have fat adipose tissue, right? So there's a lot of, so once it's like that as well, the other thing is when you look at developmental biology, and actually, you know, your, your lecturer, Dr. Sata is a developmental biologist specialist. She did her PhD um, at a medical hospital in, in, in London, actually. So you must, for those, and her speciality is actually, um, in disease of the ovary. So you almost ask a question, you know, based on that. But um, when, you all, when you all do it, you wouldn't do that until SNF2. But you recognize then that these things in terms of how they develop in the, fit, in the fetus, right? They have to specifically, you know, okay, it's either dextrocardia or normal, either on the left side or the right side. And, you know, they begin small and, you know, the, the cells lay down. Then you have the, skeletal tissue laying down, you have the musculature, you have the adipose, you know, they lay down in a particular order. So once that is down, it is down. So to answer your question, Alan, could your heart flip flop? Let me just say this much, because one of the things we also taught in science, you never say no. I never speak in, never speak in absolutes. But in terms of in the literature, there's no occurrences recorded where that has occurred. Doesn't mean it doesn't but the probability is exceptionally low that it could in terms of our current knowledge based on 
uh, anatomy and physiology. For the heart to flip flop, that would be exceptionally hard to do. So I would say the probability is exceedingly low. Yeah. I don't know if I answer your question, there, Alan. Yeah. Okay, let's go. All right, so that's the, the, the torso there. All right, and here we see the kidneys, right, left and right, the adrenal glands. What do they secrete? Something that we have adrenal in it that causes us to run and sweat and open your eyes. And um, the flight and fight syndrome also associated. Adrenaline. Yeah. Adrenaline. yeah. Adrenaline. And what's the other name for adrenaline? Adrenaline has another name if you're in America. It begins with E. And it rhymes with epinephrine. Epinephrine? Epinephrine, yeah. So epinephrine and adrenaline is one and the same. I don't know if some of you all ever seen some of those um, action movies ever see like somebody dead and then you'll see the star boy or star girl take out a syringe and fill it with something and push it like pump it into the chest and then squeeze it off and then you see the person suddenly take like a deep breath and wake up yeah yeah that's adrenaline adrenaline will do that and you would see it in your professional career i'm certain you know if you're working yeah. particularly theater yeah. and so on so, yeah been done already. oh yes yeah, so oh talk to me yeah. about a little gravy on that rice talk to me about yeah. it well so one of our co-workers mm. collapsed and mm. that, they had to all the trolley everything we were what? runners and those nurses had to get, get on top of her and start to pop up and everything. And one of the nurses took a very big knee. Yes, 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 big, yeah. With the adrenaline and she finished trades between that, her breastbone there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And she was able to, but she, after what, she still didn't last. She didn't make it all. Oh. Yeah, she was oh. able to see it. But to see it, yeah, is something else, yeah? But Some that is one year. It is, it is, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, yeah, it sure is. But thanks for sharing that, Michelle. Yeah. So like I can say in your professional career, you probably will see it. Yeah. So okay, so we look at the human kidneys, part of the urinaries, urinaries uh, system. And in terms of organ system on that topic, how many organ, how many um organ systems do we have in the body? I forget how many. 11. 11. 11 organ systems. Yes, yes. Anybody? Is, is there a word you can remember to name them? If you have a bread and you don't cut it, where you say the bread is? Yeah. It is unsliced, right? Unsliced? Unsliced? If you don't cut it, it's unsliced. U N S L I C E D, and just remember R R M, and that's all the it's eleven organ systems, and that's it unsliced R R M. I'll put it in the chat, you know. But um, that's the acronym for it. U N S L L I C E and E C D. Sir, so I didn't understand it, but I get it now. Cool. Huh? I put it in the chat. U N S L I C E D O U N R R M. So you, what does the U stand for? Urinary. Oh, right. urinary, urinary system, right? N. Nervous. Nervous. S. Skeletal. Skeletal. L. Lymphatic. Lymphatic. I. Immune. Something related to your skin here and here. Immune. Integumentary. The integumentary. Yeah. The yeah, immune is actually yeah. Immune is part of your nervous system. Sorry, in part of your lymphatic system. U N S L I C. Circulatory. The, the correct. Cardiovascular. Cardiovascular. Yeah, because Cardiovascular. you could argue that both the respiratory and your lymphatic system, where you have things circulating, that they could be termed as circulatory. So that's why you say oh. cardiovascular. Yeah. U N S L I C E. Endocrine. Endocrine hormones. We all know about that one. A D, which we spoke about that length when you eat food. Digestive. Digestive, Digestive system. R. Respiratory. Well, it could be respiratory and the next one, reproduction or vice versa. Right, reproduction and the M. Very now, true. The M stands for? 
Muscular. Muscular. Out of all of those, which one is the most important one? The cranial one. The, the nervous system, all right. Okay, I'll give you a hint. Is the reproductive system. Why is the reproductive system the most important one? What will happen if we didn't reproduce? We will, it, one word. We will exist. Yeah, we'll extinct. <laughs> We'll go extinct. We'll End disappear. of the human race. End of the human race, right? Yeah. So that's why reproduction is so important. And in fact, during reproduction, of course, right, um, adrenaline is actually released, which is why your heart rate go up, your eye begin to sweat, your pupils will dilate, which is why persons who have heart issues have to be careful in terms of engaging insects because of the fact that they could actually die, you know, so they always have to be I careful, particularly with men. Yeah. Right, if you're talking about Viagra as well, because Viagra, what it does, it releases nitric oxide, which actually causes the um, arteries to dilate so that more blood could flow to the penis. And actually what moves a penis from flaccid to erect is the fact that it's filled with blood. So they have to be careful with taking Viagra because if they take too much or if they don't follow the um, prescribed dose, you could actually maintain an erection for quite a while. And seeing that you have issues with the heart, because of the fact that the blood is lower down there, your heart rate goes up and it could cause you, if you have heart issues, it could go into cardiac arrest or some other issue. So always have to be careful for men, right? And only that women to tell your men as well, if they do have heart issues, always refer to a cardiologist, you know, before engaging in sex, because it could be the last thing that they actually do. Yeah. All right. Let's go. So here it is, you're looking at the... Oh, excuse, but that's yeah, something that if mm -hmm. you get to the hospital quickly or you get medical attention quickly, you can mm -hmm. be seen too and you can be okay. Oh, in terms of when you have a erection for extended period of time? Or if you have, if you're going cardiac arrest, which one? Yeah, you well, both, both, yeah, both, the whole yeah. situation. Yeah, yeah, correct, correct. Yeah, so they do have things that could reverse it. Yes, if they do get it to the hospital. Um, but it just in terms, and like as I said, though, it all depends on the type of heart ailment. So the major thing is not necessarily the erection having it for extended period of time, it's the heart concern. That is the major issue. Right. So while the having an erection for extended period of time might be uncomfortable, yes, that is that's reversible. So you wouldn't have it for years and years and years. No, but it is reversible. But the thing is, is the strain on the heart. That is the thing that is important, particularly for persons who already have existing heart condition. All right. That's a very good question. All right. So this is the torso showing the different parts. Notice how everything is put away so nicely. Female reproductive system, we'll look at that later on. You wouldn't look at this until SNF2, right? So again, this is Dr. Satara's area of specialty, right? She's a rep reproductive specialist. So whenever you're on this topic, is to ask her plenty of questions. This is her area of specialty, right? So where does, where does, reprodu where does fertilization occur? What part? Right, in the neck of the fallopian tube, right? So this is where fertilization occurs and implantation occurs in the uterus. Does implantation only occur in the uterus? Is that the only place where implantation occurs? And the answer is no, actually. Could it, it could, yeah, yeah, in the fallopian tube, it's be all over the, in fact, sometimes in the stomach, it has some weird, and you will see it, especially if you work on the maternity ward, with a uh, OBGYN, you would see, you know, persons presenting with ectopic pregnancies where it doesn't, you don't have implantation in the uterus. And of course, then a decision has to be made in terms of if it is affecting the mother's life. So that is a very important decision that has to be made there. Um, if it's so in terms of terminating the pregnancy. Happen. Yeah, go ahead. And those things happen like when you're tired, you exactly. Does it happen if in, I, I don't know. That's a very good question, Renel. I don't know. Maybe Dr. Sata will be able to answer it better. Is, so then the question no, on the floor mean. is, um, does the probability of ectopic pregnancies increase when fallopian tubes are tied off or ligated, as the case might be? I don't know. Um, I can't speak with certainty on it. I, I, I just don't know. But that's a very good question. Because, because I hear something about that. I didn't really look into it because it wasn't right. my place. It was my business. So, so one of the, really when, it, when you hear questions on that, where you could look up information on that, one good place. 
right? Always preface the search. You could, there's a search engine which is available by the US Department of Family and Health. It's right, a very good site. I'll, I'll put it in the chat, PubMed. So put that in front, put PubMed in front of any search. Right. That's a good question. So you put PubMed, right? And then what you want to know, um, relationship. Come on, come on. My computer misbehaving. You all see in the, um, the search you're doing, yeah? Yes, sir. Uh-huh. Yes, sir. Okay. It's all right. So read the oh there it is. All right. Relationship, right? Between um what it is you want to know? Um tied tubes. So that tied fallopian tubes. And well, what's the relationship you're asking again? And um, um, pregnancy or uh... tie tubes. So I wanted to know if you tie a tube, if that would cause ectopic pregnancies. Yeah, specifically. Yeah, right. yeah, because I heard somebody Let's who have a look. has their tubes and tied ectopic pregnancy. Right. So one of the things you always do, I mean, you all are medical practitioners, is always move from a position of authority, and so just look it up. Ectopic, and here it is, a paper was written. So what PubMed is, it's a database of papers. So this is where research has been done in which persons, let's say they will go and look at the records in hospitals and look for specific incidences of this occurring and they will write and inform this paper on it. So then you could quote this, you know, and, and, and get it up. So here it is, um, a paper, the risk of ectopic tendencies, and they write papers on it after tubal sterilization. We report 13 cases of ectopic falling tubal ligation out of 287. These findings suggest that tubal sterilization does not invariably confer infertility. All right, so this one is saying then that once you, it doesn't cause uh, infertility, must not be disregarded in women who have undergone tubal especially. So this is looking at, um, certain cases of ectopic falling tubal ligation. So this is saying then that after they had the tubal ligation or the sterilization, they still had, there were just 13 cases, 13 cases um, of ectopic pregnancies out of 200 seen during a six, six year period, right? So falling out of 287 then ectopic pregnancies seen, let's say, I don't know where the, catch area was, but out of 287, 13 involved cases where they had, the persons had tubal ligation before. So what they're saying is ectopic pregnancies are rare, but 13, 13 of that, which is a really small percentage. Let's have another look here. There's another paper that was written, relationship to tubal reconstruction. It's a shady campaign, right? A shift tubal at a high risk for ectopic, three to 2% will copper will encounter ectopic pregnancies after the surgery. So what is between three to 20% of patients then who had tubal ligation um, encountered uh, ectopic pregnancies even after they had it. So all that being said, the risk is low, well, relatively low, but in fact, after sterilization, they shouldn't have it at all. They had a history of tubal as their underlying etiology and compared with others such as PID. Now, history of tubal said we should place the patient at a high risk group. Ectopic pregnancies after tubal surgery. I wonder what, now this is different in terms of tubal, um, tubal surgery. This is not sterilized. But this one after tubal sterilization, this one. But this one, you know, it points to the fact that you had are very low, about 5% of persons who were sterilized, they still had ectopic pregnancies. So to answer your question, based on this paper that was written in 1991, right, by Shai et al., the risk of it is very, very low, but it's not impossible, but it's low. 
Well, the fact that you're sterilized and you're having children, of course, that in and of itself is very low, but the incidence is very low. So then to say or find that, you know, once you do have it, it increases. Based on this, I would say the answer is no, that that is not true. All right. Okay, sir, thanks. Okay, you're welcome. Yeah, after tubal sterilization. Well, like this one. It does not, a total of 10,000 tubal will follow. Oh, this one is nice. 10,000 women were followed. We intended to follow all the women for five years. There were 47. So imagine 47 out of 10,685. Somebody have a calculator. What percent is that? Zero, three, one, one, three, four, five. Three eight. There were forty-seven out of ten thousand six eighty-five. What is that as a percentage? That is really small. That's less than one percent. There you go. Um, calculator. Um, forty-seven divided by ten thousand six hundred and eighty-five. So that is 0 0.004, 0.4%, right? So that's like less than 1% of persons who had, who were sterilized out of a total of 10,000, approximately 11,000 women, they followed them. And there were only 47 ectopic pregnancies which, which occurred out of that cohort or group of approximately 11,000. So it's very, very low. Now, mark you, if one person fall within this 47, I mean, that is all, you know, all in all. But in generally speaking, then, it's less than 1% of persons who are sterilized will go on to have an ectopic pregnancy. So the probability is very, very low, okay? So if somebody asks you that, you could tell them, you know, based on what you saw in the literature, you know, it's less than 1%. It happens. It's, it's very rare. All right? We good? All right, we almost finished. Today is just a long day because it's the first day, but normally the session will be one hour long. Wrapping up in nine minutes. Okay, so this here is showing then the female reproductive system. Here it is, the fallopian tube, uterus, and the different um, segments of it. Again, notice the position of the urinary bladder to the uterus, which is why persons who are pregnant oftentimes want to micturate or urinate a lot. Note the um, proximity to the lower part of the large intestine. So you could have constipation or you could have the urge to defecate a lot. I could go both ways. Male reproductive system, as we mentioned, a flaccid penis. This actually has to be filled with blood to get an erection. So we mentioned about Viagra, which is a nitric oxide release. The nitric oxide causes um, dilation of the blood vessels leading to the penis, which causes the blood to go in. So for persons who have issues um, with erection, that is why how Viagra works. Nothing more. It, it releases nitric oxide. And nitric oxide actually causes dilation of the blood vessels leading to the penis, causing erection to occur. And here's the male reproductive system. Note with the male reproductive system, the urethra leaving from the bladder itself, voiding the bladder, the urethra is distal to the rectum. Unlike in the females, it's a lot closer, which gives females then they have a greater incidence of infection from the rectum, particularly from E. coli bacteria. So you always have to be careful in terms of hygiene because they run the risk of infection a lot more than males because the male have the penis and the urethra is distal from the body itself. So directional terms, please take note of your directional terms when you're reviewing them. And the body regions, the anatomical, thoracic, abdominal, and pelvic regions. Note this is the anatomical position with the palms facing forward. That is called the anatomical position. And again, this is your dorsal region or your back, uh, posterior region. Scapula, this has to do with the, we look more at this when we look at the skeletal system. Yeah. All right, so in terms of your plane, you have your frontal plane and you have your sagittal plane. Sagittal comes across 
cuts you in half. The frontal cuts you in sections this way, all right? And this is a coronal section is showing then the heart, the lung, stomach, and the liver. Interesting, here we see the, why does the spinal cord run through the vertebra? One word beginning with P. So the spinal cord, why does it run between the bones? Protection. Protection, yeah. Anybody here like to eat chicken neck? Yes, sir. Right, so you know how, you know that thing it is suck out from the neck? Yes, sir. That's the spinal cord, you know. That is, that is this you're sucking out. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. I'm mad at that. That is what you do. Yeah. So they, that's why you're sucking out here. This part here, the spinal cord. Right? And notice always be inside that bone. And as quite rightly mentioned, it's for protection. You have that bone around it. Yeah? So that's for protection. Is there a break between your brain and your spinal cord? Sir, repeat that, please. Is there a break between your brain and your spinal cord in normal no. situation? What would happen if there's a break? One word beginning with P. Paralyzed. Yeah, paralyzed or you get paralysis occurring, right? So it's very important. It's consistent. Even though most of the time when we think about the brain, right, we think about this part here. Um, but it's actually, it's continuous. It goes all the way down, right? And there's no break at all. And here you can see it, the cranial cavity, spinal cavity. This is your thoracic and abdominal cavity. And of course, your pelvic, your reproductive organs, digestive organs, and then your respiratory and cardiovascular organs are usually located here, right? And importantly, there are membranes around the different structures, your heart, has a pericardium. Why do you have these membranes? So oftentimes they say the pericardium around the heart is like taking your fist and you're pushing it into a balloon full with water. Now the balloon is tied off, so you're just pushing it in. So the balloon, you know, forms around the heart. Why do you think you have this fluid filled bag around your heart for? It prevents one thing, something beginning with F, something that generate heat. Friction. Friction, yeah, right? So very importantly, you know, it generates heat, it's friction, so there you have it there, and um, you don't want friction to occur. What would happen if it didn't have the sac and it was rubbing all the time on the lungs? What would happen to the heart? If something keeps rubbing, rubbing, rubbing against it, what would happen? Puncture, tear, something. Yeah. Something yeah, it would tear, puncture, something would happen, yeah, as Alan said, yeah. Something would happen, right? If it keep rub, it will rub it, rub, rub. And then what will happen eventually? Well, it would go through the myocardium or the meat of the heart, and then the blood would run out. Not a good situation to be in at all, right? So to prevent that, it has this fluid filled sac around it. Okay. So what did we look at today? Well, we looked at the organization of the body systems after our introduction. We looked at the directions, different directions. We mentioned the organ systems, the 11 organ systems. We looked in some detail at the digestive system, mentioned the length of the large and small intestine. How tall? Mm, how long is the, the, the large intestine again? Approximately how long? How many feet? Five feet. Five feet. And when we're looking at the small intestine, how many women 20. tall? 20. 20. Right. So how many four women, women tall? Four women tall. Always remember yes. that, right? And then four women tall. When you think about small intestine, small intestine. Think about the syllables for small intestine, yeah? If you break up small intestine, how are we going? Small intestine. Nine, not so? Oh. And it's four. So just remember, it's four women tall, and the approximate height of a woman is five feet. So therefore, you know, the small intestine is approximately 20 feet in length. So we looked at that. We looked at the different other structures. A very good question was raised. Many quite good questions were raised. One, one which I remember as it related to ectopic pregnancies then. You know, if somebody is sterilized, what is the probability of them getting an ectopic pregnancy? And we looked in the literature, PubMed, right? And what the literature showed is that after they followed persons, they found that on average, less than 1% of persons who did, who were sterilized, ended up getting an ectopic pregnancy or pregnancy outside of the uterus, not with the fact that they were sterilized, you know, ectopically, all right? And that is all for today. So let me stop sharing, let me um, stop the recording as well.
good session, so I enjoyed it very much. All right. Yes, so yes, it's so easy to understand. Same as well. All right, let me yes, see. Yes, so same this. here. Let me see. No, my, no, my computer misbehaving after all of that. Oh, here it is. I did not. Let me just stop the recording. Come on.